Lesson 5.2, Analyzing Discrete Random Variables. Today we're going to discuss making a histogram to display the probability distribution of a discrete random variable and describe its shape. We'll calculate and interpret mean and standard deviation of our discrete random variables. So the question here today is who will win at skee-ball? Mr. and Mrs. Lucas spent a full day playing skee-ball and collected some data. So based on the data, who would you predict to win a match? So go ahead and check out these probability distributions for Mr. Lucas's score, which will be defined as random variable X, and then Mrs. Lucas's score, which will be defined as random variable Y. So are these discrete or continuous random variables? In this case, we have a pair of discrete random variables, noticing that there are only certain values that our variables can take on with no values in between. So we'd say both are discrete because you can earn 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50 points with no values in between those particular values. Question two asks us to verify that the probability distributions are valid. And there are two parts to a probability distribution being valid. The first is that all of the probabilities are between zero and one. So clearly looking at both models, all probabilities are between 0 and 1. Then I need to make sure that the probabilities in each of these add up to be 1. So for random variable x, I add those five values together, and I do get 1 as the sum of the probabilities. I'll repeat this for y. The sum of the probabilities in the table will be also 1. So we're good. Each probability distribution is totally valid. Finally, we want to find the probability that x is at least 40. So what's the probability that Mr. Lucas scores at least 40 points? So because there's the equal to symbol, we would include 40 and 50 here. So we'll include both 14% and 6% to be 20% chance that he earns a uh, 40 or higher. From Mrs. Lucas, same thing. What's the probability she earns a 40 or more? And she is a little bit lower here at 10% and 5% being 15%. So if you're only basing it on getting the highest possible scores, it might be that Mr. Lucas could win here. So let's continue to analyze the situation. Um, I went ahead and grabbed the tables from the previous page for us to find the average of the X values and find the average of the Y values. And again, think about who will win looking now at just average values. So the expected value will be calculated by taking each of the values and multiplying by it the probability of that outcome. So we'll start by multiplying 10 times 0.4 and then we'll multiply 20 times 0.2, and we will add those values together. Then we'll add 30 times the 0.2, and continue by multi multiplying 40 times 0.14 and 50 times 0.06 to get an expected value of 22.6 points in the skee-ball game for Mr. Lucas. That's his average score. Then if you look at Mrs. Lucas's score, we'll repeat this process. She has a 2% chance of scoring a 10. So we'll multiply 10 times 2%. And then 20 will get multiplied by 0.28, 28%, so on and so forth until we've multiplied each outcome times its probability to get 28.8 points. So in this case, it looks like Mrs. Lucas may actually have the advantage. Okay, maybe Mrs. Lucas will do better, even though Mr. Lucas does have a tendency to score a little bit higher some of the time. So now, in Staplet, we can create a histogram that gives us the distribution for each of these values. So, the two distributions should be over here. This would be a skewed right distribution, which you can tell that the distribution is going to be skewed right in the table because the majority of the values are over here in the 10 and 20 region, with him having a lower probability of earning a 40 or a 50. Then the graph of the distribution for y looks to be apparently roughly symmetric with most of Mrs. Lucas's scores being here at about 30. 
So we already calculated the mean to be the expected value of 22.6 for Mr. Lucas's graph. And the standard deviation is going to be calculated either using technology or using a calculator, which we'll go through in class. And the standard deviation for his distribution is 12.777. We also calculated the mean already, but my uh, staplet, applet, confirmed that the expected value for Mrs. Lucas was 28.8, and the standard deviation of my scores would be 8.035. So notice that my scores, Mrs. Lucas's scores, are higher on average with less variability, okay? Most of my scores lie in here in the 20 to 40 range, whereas Mr. Lucas's scores, he has a lot of lower scores, which increases standard deviation, even though he did have a higher tendency of 40s and 50s. So based on the applet, it seems as if Mrs. Lucas will win. Again, because her average score is higher and there is less variability in her scores than in Mr. Lucas's. So let's break this down. What are the big ideas? What are the things we need to know? Again, bringing back the idea of creating a histogram, we put the values along the x-axis and we put the probabilities along the y-axis. Calculating the mean of a discrete random variable, we take the sum, uppercase sigma, of each value times its probability. And so that's exactly what we did in that example, taking each value in that discrete random variable probability distribution, multiplying each pair and adding them all up. And then this formula, you really don't need it. Um, we will be using technology in order to calculate standard deviation, but we will use that to measure how much do the values of the variable typically differ from the mean. All right, so I hope this helped hopefully solidify a little bit more of our understanding with discrete random variables. If you do have questions or concerns, please reach out at any time. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.